welcome everyone to the faculty onboarding webinar. This is our second time running the webinar, and we like to do this for new faculty, sessional instructors, or even if you've been at Boise for a while, um, we're going to provide you with all of the information uh, and tools that you need to be successful from an IT standpoint, from education commons standpoint. So today's session, uh, we're going to go through a couple things. So the first thing we're going to introduce and talk about what is education commons. I'm going to pass it over to our director for a welcome, and then we're going to show you some of the Education Commons team that you'll be working with if you're submitting tickets and things like that. We're then going to go into computer hardware, as well as a lot of the online teaching and learning tools, you know, things like Quercus, Zoom, um, as everything to, all the way down to Microsoft Word and Office 365. So, um, and at the very end, as I mentioned, there will be time for questions. And there is a quick survey we'd love for you to fill out at the very end. Um, again, if you do have questions, please type them in the chat or just save them for the very end and we will hopefully answer them for you. So I'm going to pass things over right now to our Director of Education Commons, Yulia Duncan. Excellent. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is our second session of the year of our faculty orientation program. Our hope is that today you will learn about what your Education Commons team offers to you, ways you can enable your academic and research endeavors, how you can engage with us and celebrate each other as we build everlasting relationships. We've created this orientation program for you this year for the very first time, and we created three sessions throughout the year, one in April, another in August, this one, and then in November. As you engage with us today, we do look forward to hearing from you on how we can make it even better the next time. So what is Education Commons? The Education Commons is your technology people. Our community refers to us as IT+, and the plus comes from our engagement in the research activities. And we engage from a pre-award application process to the activities in, uh, that we engage in the post-award um, situations. As we navigate year three of the pandemic, we have readjusted in how we deliver our services to OISE community. So you will find us on site, remote and hybrid. Our today's amazing team here will discuss the services that are available to you and how to get them. I hope you find today's session informative and I thank you all of you for joining us and please enjoy. Great, thanks, Yulia. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start meeting the Education Commons team. We're, we're a growing team, but the reality is that there's probably only a small select group of us that you as faculty members or sessional instructors are going to be working with. Um, we do a lot of behind the scenes stuff, but we also do a lot of front facing stuff uh, for teaching and learning. So the first two groups they work together um, is the IT service management coordinator and the service delivery specialist. So these are the folks on the front line and I'm gonna pass this over to Daniel. Thank you so much, Ryan. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I am the IT service management coordinator. Um, my role and responsibility here at EC, at Education Commons, is I deal with the day-to-day -day operations. Um, so when it's putting in tickets, um, and I also oversee the service delivery team and the intermediate system administrator. So my team, the service delivery team, consists of three individuals. Chandra, Neil, and Brian. Uh, when you are putting in a ticket, these are usually the first one of these three, or sometimes more, um, are one of the individuals that would reach out to you for the first contact. Asking you questions, trying to understand your issue, and then trying to get it to a resolve status as quickly as possible. Some of the services that we do deliver is, like I said, first point of contact, um, the service delivery team is there. They're always supporting you. Our goal is to reach out the moment you put in ticket, try and reach out as soon as possible, try and understand your issue and try and work with you to get a resolution. We are also responsible to enhance our customer service, whether it's, a question that doesn't directly relate to the IT processes that you see here today. Um, we are always here to help and we're always here to assist. So feel free to ask any questions and we can direct you in the, in the right way. And then timely responses and resolutions. As I said before, very timely, we try and do our best to answer all your questions as soon as possible 
And if not, we kind of let you know that we will get back to you in maybe an hour or so if we are dealing with something important at a time. So there is constant communication with the service delivery and us at EC as well. So here are some kind of introductory stats that you can kind of take back with you uh, and just kind of see how as a team, we are very busy and we are trying our best to try and help resolve as many tickets as we possibly can. So from the time span of February to March, we have about 455 tickets, which an average response time of four hours and tickets resolved were 308. So a high majority of those tickets. From the virtual services, which is 60 days, we've had 96 drop-ins with an average drop-in time of about 16 minutes and 69 privately booked consultations, which we'll get to shortly. So there are many different ways that you can connect with Education Commons. There is the online service hub, and in this picture, you will see it, where you are able to enter a ticket. You can look at FAQs. Um, put in requests for equipment. We do also have a daily drop-in session. This daily drop-in session is with one of the service delivery that sits inside it from 11 till three every single day, Monday to Friday. So if you ever wanted to pop by and ask a question and chat with a real live representative, you can. We do one-on-one -on -one consultations. So if you feel that um, you want to speak to someone specifically or you have a direct question with a specific application or a specific um, device question, you can jump into a specific with a specific member from Education Commons, and then they can work you through and help you through your problem. We have webinars and workshops as well for different topics, obviously, throughout the year. So we have ones for uh, M365. We have AV and hybrid ones as well. We do do personalized training as well as, as per requests. And then we do video resourcing as well. So we do have a YouTube channel where we can, there are videos up there. If there's any questions that you might have, sometimes you will be directed to these YouTube videos and you have step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. So services and support. So computer hardware. So for me, looking at this attendee list, you have probably, I have probably reached out to some of you already, and you probably have seen my name in some of these emails for the CRP program. So getting a device and part of our CRP program is you receiving a device for a four year period of time, and then it gets renewed. This is covered um, usually by it's an $1,800 budget, depending on your use case. Um, so the process is we would reach out to you, you would have a list of devices. You can have consultations with myself or someone from the service delivery team. And we would find out what the best spec device is for you. It would be ordered. And then the device would be set up with white glove service by one of the service delivery members. If you are having any issues with this or you do have any questions about your computer, again, you can join the Zoom drop-in from 11 to 3 from Monday to Friday. You can place a ticket through our online service sub or you can book a consultation. Some fun and great things now that we are in a little bit more of in a, in a hybrid world, um, we do have new technology that supports this as well. So here is one of the technologies that we do use. It's called OWL, and this is meant for hybrid meetings. Um, this is a very as much plug and play device as much as possible. You plug it into your device and it has a built in speaker and camera and microphone. What it does is it captures a 360 degree of the entire room at the top banner there in that first picture. But it also, as there are speakers, it tries to capture individual speakers. Um, so if there is conversation that is happening, it is finding who is speaking and individually capturing those individuals. This way, it brings together a little bit more of an intimate conversation as opposed to our old school boardroom way of kind of showing the room and then projecting everybody in the room and you're not sure who's talking. And this also becomes a little bit difficult when there are masks involved as well. So in the picture on the top there, you can see that we're all wearing masks, but it's still individually capturing all of us as we are speaking. And it also provides some other functionalities as well, like ignore zones. So we can ignore specific places. We can remove the 360 banner. Uh, there is a tracking and presentation mode. So if I were to walk around in a circle, it would actually track me. And then we can also just use it as a steady camera and focus it on a specific point. 
All right, and that's thanks. it for me, and I'll pass it back to Ryan. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, so the last group we're going to talk about today are the technology adoption consultants. Um, and there's three of us. We have Lays, myself, and Andrea. So Lays focuses on internal systems and applications, process optimizations. Uh, my role is focusing on classroom technologies and services, anything regarding online teaching and high flex teaching, uh, as well as virtual reality. And Andrea focuses on post-production and web development. And so the technology adoption team, we're very similar to the service delivery specialists in, in the sense that we are very collaboration focused and we do want to improve your user experience um, during your time at OAZ. Whether you're teaching one course or you're a fully tenured instructor, we are here to support you and also find new technologies that can improve um, everything you're doing at the institution. Now, one of the, probably the, bigger uh, areas that we like to focus on, especially since, uh, you know, the pandemic and switching to online is the university's learning management system, which is called Quercus. Now, if you're from another institution and you've used something called Canvas before, very similar, we've just rebranded it um, Quercus, which is the genus species of an oak tree. Um, and it's a really uh, user-friendly way that you can teach your course online. And we provide all kinds of services and support, um, whether it's a quick question you wanna ask to the service delivery specialist, or if you want um, a more intensive consultation with myself, I can show you more of the uh, deeper ins and outs of how Quercus works. We also have available to our faculty members is a Quercus course template. So if it's your first time teaching a course and it's, you're gonna get a blank course, we actually have a template we can import into your course, which will at least give you a bit of a head start when it comes to building out your course. Now, if you've taught a course um, in the previous semester, let's say, we can easily import that course into your new course shell and you can make all the tweaks and updates that are needed. But occasionally running a course for the first time is, is a, bit, uh, a bit of a daunting experience. Um, and there's also even opportunity, if you do know the instructor who has taught the course previous to you. Um, sometimes they'll allow you to copy in their course content, again, just to give you a little bit of a head start when building your course. Inside the Quercus course template as well, there's all kinds of links to resources we've created. So, you know, we have a Quercus crash course video, videos that show you how to use rubrics, um, where you can upload video content, and how to run uh, Zoom sessions with your Quercus course as well. So um, I know this is probably a little bit overwhelming, but there are a lot of different things we can help you with from keeping your course very, very simple to maybe a more advanced hybrid style course with all the bells and whistles. Um, there are a bunch of upcoming Quercus workshops that are happening through Education Commons in September and then even into October. Um, again, these are just some of them and they will be listed on our uh, upcoming Education Commons brand new website, which is coming very soon. Um, and you'll be able to register for these sessions, just like how you've registered for uh, this webinar today. Um, but we're also available for one-to-one -one consultations, especially if you can't wait until uh, September. We also have a YouTube channel, as Daniel mentioned. Um, here we try to keep videos for some of the most popular questions um, and troubleshooting things that are asked by our community. Um, you know, learning how to build a course from the ground up, how to use a shared mailbox, you name it, you can usually find those videos in there. And if you would like us to create a video resource for you, um, we'd be more than happy to, to look at that and, and see if we can get that going. Now, this is a, one of the other big questions, if you are, especially if you're a new hire, is using Zoom for teaching and learning and getting access to the OISE instance of Zoom. So if you do want to use Zoom, let's say you're teaching a, an online course, or I know there's an instructor in here who's teaching a hybrid course in the fall, um, you're going to want to make sure you claim your Zoom account. And there is a way to do that just by going to this JOT form link. Um, you don't have to type this out. I think we'll get one of us to share it at the very end of the session, just so you can click into it and get your account. Um, your Zoom personal account works similar to if you've ever paid for a personal Zoom 
basic account before. It lets you hold meetings with up to 300 participants. There's no time limits. You can schedule them and make them reoccurring, which is really great if you're running a lecture or a class um, at the same time every week or same couple times every week as well. Um, and this is available to the OISE community, staff, faculty, researchers, and even sessional faculty. So please, um, if you're even if you're teaching just one course, make sure you claim your your license, and we'll we'll make sure that you have that license for the duration of your employment. Uh, and there also is cloud recording available upon request. Um, we recommend just uh, you know saving your recordings yourself and then uploading them to My Media, um, which is our in-house video hosting service. So there are a couple important security features we need to consider when you're running a Zoom session. Um, with the recent shift to online learning, there's been a lot of things like Zoom bombing and stuff going on. So we really want to make sure we kind of tighten up all of our uh, all of the security in our meeting. So you can actually lock your meeting now. So once your students are in the class, you can prevent anyone else from joining. Um, we also recommend that once you schedule your, let's say your lecture for Mondays at 8 p.m., um, make sure you do enable a waiting room, just like everyone here had was waiting in the waiting room before we started. It's a nice way that you can slowly let people come into the session um, and ensure that you these are your students who are attending your, your lecture. Um, and you can also uh, hide profile pictures if you want. Um, and there's a, a, whole, a whole bunch more of security features. Um, you can also change the participant settings. So you can to determine which participants can share screen. You can enable chats if you want. You can allow users to rename themselves or unmute themselves or start their video. In this session we're running today, it's a webinar. So that feature isn't available for participants, but for a regular class lecture, you may want to ensure that students do have the ability to turn on their cameras or microphones so they can be engaged in the discussion. There's also a button to suspend participant activities. So right away, if you if you feel your sessions going off the rails, you can sus suspend all participant activities, which will just make you the instructor, the only one who can use a camera and video, even the chat will be disabled. Um, and so it's a really good uh, last step measure um, to ensure that your meeting is secure and under control. Now, just by implementing some of these security measures, if you put a passcode or a waiting room on your uh, lecture, it will really cut down on the chance of any of this happening. But we do like to uh, let everyone know that, th that it is still a bit of a risk. We also have access to all a variety of Zoom add-ons. So as I mentioned earlier, the, the general Zoom account, that's great for, for teaching, especially if you have less than 300 students. Um, and then we also have access to things like Zoom webinar, which is what I'm running right now. So if you're a faculty member and you wanna run, let's say a big workshop university-wide, um, Zoom webinar is great because you can really control um, who the panelists are versus who the participants are and really make it focused on you who's delivering the content. Um, it will also allow you to, to uh, increase the participants to 500. And there may be some fees uh, that apply to that for, for you and or your department. Um, and then the last one, which is a brand new feature by Zoom is called Zoom Events. And that's really meant for hosting Zoom uh, co conferences. You can add different sessions. It has a very nice interface if you've ever been to a virtual conference before, very similar to Hopin, um, but, but actually a lot better. And same thing as well, additional fees may apply, but down the road, if you're thinking of hosting a, a conference or maybe your department is, please reach out to Education Commons and we'd be glad to walk you through all of the steps and help you get it set up. And again, this is just a bit of an overview to determine which one is gonna be right for you. For the most part, as mentioned, meetings will be the best for teaching, um, but we do uh, have expanded ability in webinar and events, uh, which is just something to keep in the back of your mind. And now I'll pass things over to Lace to talk about uh, email and faculty profiles. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Yep. So as, as I mentioned earlier at the start of the uh, webinar, uh, some of you may be new hires or some of you ha have been a student or an alumni at the uh, U of T and now you're hired as an instructor. So we'll just go over on how you can be able to activate your new email account and or switch uh, from your student or alumni to a faculty um, email account. So first things first, as a new hire, you will get an HR uh, letter, either from an OCHR or your business officer. And from here, you'll be able to see your UTER ID 
and your secret activation key. And these are very important in order for you to activate your user ID. And then from there, you can be able to activate your email account. So we posted the site here where you can be able to enter all this information. And as soon as you click the uh, button validate on the next page, you can be able to claim your user uh, UFT email account. So the format that UFT uses in general is your first name, dot last name at utoronto.ca. Next, if you are a previous a student or an alumni and now you are hired as an instructor, you can claim an additional email account which will serve as your faculty email. So what's the, what's the difference between a student to a faculty email account? It's the do domain name. So usually as a student, your domain is at, at student, uh, I'm sorry, at mail.utoronto.ca. And once you're hired as a staff, as a faculty, um, it will be changed to at utoronto.ca. So we posted the link here. And then um, once you click the link, and if you're eligible after entering your email, uh, sorry, your UTOR ID and your password, you will be um, prompted to a page that says, yes, you can activate a new email account. And then the domain name is just a, a different one. So as you can see from the page, uh, for me, I was a student and I'm now an alumni and I'm now I'm also a staff. So I have three email accounts. And then I made my staff email account as my primary so that I all I receive all email um, coming from different sources in just one place. So another uh, great feature at working at UFD is that they, they, we, uh, UFD cares about your security. And one of the um, things that's been implemented recently is UTER MFA. UTER MFA stands for Uteronto Multi-Factor Authentication. So what it does is that it adds another layer of security. So any application within the university that requires your UTO ID and your password, um, you will be prompted on your mobile device to accept or deny. So to make sure that you are the one who's accessing these applications. So to um, as a new instructor, uh, you are uh, between seven to 14 days, uh, you will be automatically enrolled to MFA. And if not, just make sure that you self-enroll ahead of time because uh, you don't want any interruptions with regards to your login. So just uh, to point out the device compatibility for the Duo mobile application is Android 8 or iOS 13 and up. All right, so for some instructors here who are doing uh, some research or data gathering, uh, there is this uh, tool called REDCap. It stands for Research Electronic Data Capture. This is uh, developed by Vanderbilt University, and now it's being adapted by a lot of institutions, not just in Canada or US, but around the world. So this is very similar to um, Qualtrics, and what it does is very good, good for surveys and databases, and the best thing about it, it's free for the university community members. So to to request access, uh, we just have a form that you need to fill out. Um, we need uh, some information about the start and end date of your research and who requires access from your research team. And then just to be, bear in mind, in order for you to access REDCap, the prerequisite is an activated UTOR MFA. All right, so now as an instructor, one of the great benefits that you can enjoy is the full Office 365 suite. And we want to point out here uh, Teams and uh, SharePoint. Uh, with Teams, you can be able to engage with your uh, class. You can set up a new team for your class. So let's say LHAE 101, for example, and then you can add all your students in there. And from, from that uh, team site, you can be able to collaborate, uh, share our resources within your class. And lastly, I think uh, one of uh, the biggest questions here, um, if you are a new instructor, um, some of you may be having uh, your own research and one of the most um, daunting task as a researcher is managing your research funding. And uh, UFT under the uh, VP for research uh, launched uh, My Research Online. And this is a great tool in order for you to access 
uh, your expenses, track your expenses, um, also see um, some of the information with regards to where is your um, research fund is being allocated. Um, so there is a specific, um, so again, like it's under the vice president of research and they are the one who conducts uh, training. Also another resource from your department is your business officer, or if you have a department manager, they can be able to walk you through with regards to my research online. All right, so just to uh, reiterate, there are a lot of different ways you can connect with Education Commons. I know we went through a lot of uh, tools and software today, so thank you, Lays and Daniel and Yulia. There's so much that's available, um, which can be a little bit overwhelming. So the number one way and the best way to, to reach out to us is by using our online service hub. Um, and if you go to the Education Commons website, you can find it pretty quickly and you can um, basically submit a new ticket saying, hey, my having problems with my computer. Hey, I'm having problems with Quercus. How do I download Office 365 uh, applications? So anything in there, we can create a ticket for you. And that way we can track it and ensure that it's taken care of, whether by the technology, technology adoption consultants, the service delivery team, or anyone else in education comments. There's also a daily drop-in session every day with our service delivery specialists over Zoom that is also posted on our website. So you can drop in, it's just kind of first come first serve and you can get a very quick response. We also have the ability to book one-to-one uh, -one consultations. As I know, an instructor today, I've already sent the link out. Um, you can book a consultation and you can actually choose the topic you wanna to talk about. And it syncs up with our calendars so we can chat with you and, and solve that in a more personalized way. Um, we also provide all kinds of webinars and workshops throughout the year. The ones I shared in this slideshow earlier, those are just for Quercus. There are a whole bunch um, that are run by different members of our team for everything from websites to Microsoft to RedCap to uh, really any technology that's available. Um, we can also provide personalized training. So if it's you or people in your department just want to learn more about something very specific or your, your whole department or you and your students are trying to do something, um, we can provide personalized training. Um, an example is if, you're, if you are an instructor in the Master of Teaching program, you do have access to Google Workspace. So I can show you how to get that set up and I can also train your, your class on how to use that technology. We also have video resources on YouTube and we're looking to expand that uh, all the time. So please check out our YouTube channel as well. Um, and then last thing, uh, I think the last most important thing to note is who are your business officers? So depending on uh, which department you're in, we've listed the names here and the contact. Um, and these folks can, they're, they're really great for a first point of contact, if you're, especially if you're brand new to the institution and you don't even know where to begin yet. And you can't even think of getting your laptop or your Quercus because maybe you're waiting on your hiring documents and stuff like that. So uh, please reach out to your business officers as you see fit. And that's it for our main part of our session today. Uh, we're going to take questions here as well. Um, there is a form here you can scan with a QR code and sign. It's just three questions about how we did in this session or any other additional questions you have.